Thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. I glorify your name. I worship you this morning. There is none like you. Ria Santa Rabba Shalaba. Mazo Kalaba Shala Kanto Robo Zata. Yeke Babo Shalaba Zoka Taraba Gandu. Mashalaba Rabo Sokala Handiria Seke Tayaraba. Yebo Shalaba Rabo Sokala and Tarabo Shaka Zata. Makama Soka Tarabo Shanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of all glory. Blessed be your name. So praise the name of the living God. I thank the Lord for this morning that he has given us. Indeed, our God is very faithful in everything that he does. Today is on uh, Wednesday. And you always get to hear the word or to get to listen to the word of God. Uh, by the grace that he has given us. So welcome so much uh, for the word. Uh, this is an opportunity to get to listen to what the Lord wants us to receive from his word. And remember that his word has so much power. So I want us to begin with a word of prayer. And then we're going to share the message that the Lord has given me by his grace. And I know that we're going to receive the blessings of the Lord. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this hour this morning that you've given your children thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace thank you for allowing us to see another day we don't take it for granted oh lord thank you because you are fighting on our behalf thank you because you 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 love us so much thank you uh because of the power of the cross thank you for allowing us oh lord to be used as your honorable vessels so as i proceed with the word i thank you because you're faithful it is not me but by the power of your holy spirit I'll be able to minister your word to your children from wherever it is that they're watching from, from all over the world. I thank you for these blessings. We cannot receive this word except by the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot receive the revelation that is in the word except by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of all glory, for such a time like this, whereby you're lifting your servants to another level for the sake of the revival that is here with us, O oh Lord. So I thank you for every man, every woman, every youth, every other person that is watching this, O oh Lord. I thank you because it is you that has given them the burden to listen to your word by your power. I humble myself before you, O oh Lord. I thank you. Uh, I glorify your name and I worship you, O oh Lord. You deserve all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name do I believe and pray. Amen. So thank you so much for coming in this morning for those who are here god bless you so much and uh, you're on my page revivalist sister betty and i'm here to actually serve the lord by ministering you by the to you by the power of the holy spirit because the grace of god is actually sufficient for us to be able to serve god at a time like this so god bless you so much on wednesdays we always get to share the word of god from around 10 a.m in the morning kenyan time uh, for the few minutes that the Lord has given us, and I know that the Holy Spirit is going to help us. You are here also on Monday from 12 a.m. in the morning, Kenyan time. So uh, I know that uh, we are going to receive something from the Lord today. So you can share as to many people as you can, and I know that you're going to be blessed. So uh, I want us to start. We've already prayed, and I want us to go ex uh, straight on point to the Word of God. Uh, and we see what the Lord wants us to hear today. So from uh, our title for today is actually Run Your Race. And I thank the Lord because you are here and I'm here. And uh, the Lord actually has something for us. So uh, I thank God for giving us this opportunity. And uh, we all have to run our races. So whilst I was uh, meditating on this word and actually trying to see 
what it is that the Lord wants us to receive. There's something I actually I thought about that it just came to my mind when I was doing my studies. So run your race. You know, I don't know how many how many of us have actually seen what happens at the, at the field. But let me say specifically when we're talking about athletes, yeah, you've seen what they do. For example, if there's a race that is supposed to uh, occur, of course, they know when they're supposed to run the race. Uh, they know uh, what they're supposed to do before the race. So they prepare the them, uh, themselves in advance. So uh, before the race occurs, of course, everybody has their own lane. And there are some rules that are there. So if somebody comes in on the other person's lane when they're running, of course, they're going to be disqualified. But do you want to talk about running your race? Because that is what the Lord wants us to hear this morning. There's something called running your race. And you know, everybody has their own race to run. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're running, how you're running, how you're going to do it. But the most exciting thing is we are not running this race alone, definitely. Because even if you own a race, even if I'm on a race, I mean, the destination is just one. But at the end of the day, you have to run yours. I have to run mine, of course. And, uh, in the, and when you're running the race, of course, somebody who's running 100 meters, for example, I, I, I know almost all of us have watched how fast 100 meters race is. Somebody that is running 100 meter race or 200 meters race prepares for that short distance race if you put that person in a race that of course is a marathon they will not be able to qualify why because they have trained or their bodies have been trained to run that short race and that is why the 100 meter race the 200 meters race it seems so short but those men or those women are so fast they complete that race in a matter of seconds personally i cannot run that race because it's not my it's not my field uh, maybe I will say I don't love that sport so much and uh, I don't even know where I would start. But they do it because that is what they love doing and they prepare themselves knowing and telling and saying that I have to win this race because this is what I love to do. This is the food I eat, I need to take. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll have to uh, discipline myself to see what am I going to do to make sure that I have won this race in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank the Lord Jesus Christ because even if we are on a race, at the end of the day, we are saying and you're telling God this, that uh, we want to win and we want to make sure that we reach to the end, receive our victory and get our prize. The same way when they have the top, top three races, of course, there's the bronze for number three, there's the silver for number two, and then there's the gold for number one. But it's not an easy process because at the time when they're preparing themselves for the race, there are things that happen in between. But when they get uh, the final day has come for them to go to the field, they have to do whatever it takes. But in that period, they have to be well prepared. So the word for today is run your race. Run your race. That is what we have. Run your race. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ for you that is watching right now. Because uh, God wants us to run our races. There is victory. At the end of the day, we are not just running. Amen. We are not just battling every other limitation that is ahead of us. We are not just fighting every other dark force or every other thing that has been raising itself so that we do not get to the end. But at the end of the day, at the back of our minds, I know you know that we are saying in our hearts and our spirits, Lord, help us to win our crown. Lord, help us. To get our crown in the name of Jesus Christ. So the same mindset that these other athletes have in their minds is the same mindset that we have. Only that for us, it's a little bit more different because of where it is that we are going. So the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 says this, that according to the way that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, according as he hath chosen us, before him, before the foundation of the world. To mean that you have been chosen, I have been chosen, but we have been chosen because there is that destiny that is ahead of us. And because there is that destiny, meaning there's a race that you must run to get to your destiny. There's something that you must accomplish while you're still here. That is why you're running your race. That is why I'm running my race. 
but at the end of the day there's only one destination so we have been chosen by god himself into salvation and and that is something that is very precious that is something very important christ uh chose you a long time ago that is from the book of ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and also in the book of jeremiah says that he knew you or he knew he knew me before i was formed in my mother's womb and that is called destiny that is called purpose so we must live for that purpose so that we must also live knowing that at the end of the day we must chase our destinies and make sure we get to the place where the lord wants us to get in the name of jesus christ and that is why that race is there because there's something the lord wants us to see that of course there are going to be hurdles ahead of you but as long as you've been chosen you have been you have been ordained by the lord you are in this salvation for a reason and a purpose i really thank the lord for that because that is not something that we should actually take for granted in the name of jesus christ so like i began saying that today we are going to talk about running your race and my prayer as you continue with this series because this is a topic for the next three wednesdays i pray in the name of jesus christ that we are going to stay at our lanes we are going to concentrate on our lanes and we are going to run on our lanes until we see that we have gotten to the place whereby the lord wants us to get so i want us to read uh in the book of first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 uh from verses uh 24 up to 27 my bible is king james version first corinthians chapter 9 uh, from verses 24 up to 27 it says this that uh, mine is king james know ye not that they which run in a race run all but only one receiveth the prize so run that you may obtain it amen verses 25 and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things uh now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown that we and and incorruptible 26 i therefore so run not as uncertaining uh, not as uncertainly so fight as not as that one that beat at the air verses 27 but i keep my body uh, and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i preach to others i myself may be cast away uh so we are going to look at verses 24 now you know that which run in a race all but one receiveth the price so you run that you may obtain it so we are on a race we are on this long journey of salvation or of life or of the faith and that is why uh we cannot do it alone the first thing you have to re recognize is that even if you're going to run your race even if you're going to ensure that you get to the place where the lord wants you to get you have to realize this is something that you cannot accomplish on our own we cannot do anything on our own you cannot do anything by your power. You need strength. You need grace. You need faith. Because of every other hurdle that has been put ahead of us by the enemy. So that we don't get to run our race. Or so that we don't get to the place where the Lord wants us to get. And that is when the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 actually confirms that. Of course, there is a race. And we have to ensure that we get to the place where we, the Lord wants us to get in our destiny. Our children have to, our children must get to their destiny. We ourselves have to get to our destiny where the Lord has ordained for us to reach our original purpose. Our nation or your country has to get to that destiny. Your family has to get to that place. So, despite being that the, there being a race, the book of First Corinthians chapter nine verses twenty four actually confirms that says that there is a race. There is some running to do. There is some sweating along the way. There are issues that are going to rise along, along the way. But you have to know that at the end of the day, we can do nothing apart from the grace and the power that the Lord has given us to be able to fight the good fight of faith and to get to the place where the Lord wants you to get. And that is why the Holy Spirit wants you to concentrate and be at the place where he wants you to be. Because, you know, if uh, in an ordinary situation, in the physical, somebody cannot get to somebody's line and start running, they get disqualified. The Lord wants us to be at your lane, running in your lane, focusing ahead, making sure that you get 
to the finish line because it is very, very possible. It doesn't matter how you're going to get there or what you're going to get or what you're going to do to get there. But at the end of the day, the Lord wants to ensure that we run and we get to the place where he wants us to get. And that is our destinies and our original purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, aside from that, verse 25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, knowing that they do it to obtain a corruptible crown in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a reward and there is a price. The same way that when you're working in your workplace and you do very well in your workplace, of course, there is a reward. People are going to recognize you and say that you've been doing such a good job. I've been feeling in my heart, that is your boss saying that you deserve maybe an extra salary or you deserve maybe to be given some package, of course, to boost you or to, uh, or to make you feel like you are appreciated in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the same way in the kingdom of God that we have to run our race and be on that journey of faith. And like we said, you cannot do it alone. Now, the best example, of course, I have to give you an example of somebody who ran the race and how they are very, very effective in the name of Jesus Christ so that we can build our faith and know that even if the journey is going to be there, this is what I need to do Well, I'm, uh, well, I'm at it. How do I get there? How do I ensure that I uh, do whatever I'm supposed to do while I'm still here? Now, there's this one ban that, of course, we remember until today because he was able to run his own race and he came into this world with one purpose and one agenda apart from the many other things that he did and he was very very successful in the name of jesus christ why are we sharing this uh, uh why are we sharing uh, this testimony because we want to share it so that you can know that it is very possible for you to run your race it is very possible for you to get to the place that you want to get it is very possible to succeed as a believer and do the things that the Lord wants you to do. And at the end of the day, become fruitful. At the end of the day, uh, able to live your God-ordained purpose or get to your destination. Because we are praying and asking the Lord to help us. So if you read in the book of John, chapter 19, verses 30. John, chapter 19, verses 30. There's a word for us there. John, chapter 19, verses 30. It says this, when Jesus therefore had received, um, sorry, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Let me just repeat that scripture. John chapter 19 verse 30. It says that when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar and they filled, uh, sorry, when Jesus had Therefore, receive the vinegar. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, this was Jesus Christ at the cross. It was at the final hour. Amen. It was at the final hour. After doing everything else that he was supposed to do in, on this world, he's there at the cross. Amen. And at the cross, the time has come for him to leave this world. And what does he say when he leaves? He says that it is finished. It is finished. Now, if you look at just this small uh, script, uh, this small word that we have just read from the book of John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus had all the right to say that because he said that it was finished because he had already accomplished his purpose. He had already uh done what he was supposed to do because he was on assignment while he was still here on this earth now these are encouraging words because they actually realize that what christ did for us he did it perfectly he did it in the way that he was supposed to do and remember he was sent here on a purpose for you and for me and the main agenda and the main purpose being to reconcile us back to our father that is why we get to enjoy the great salvation that we enjoy until today. The name of Jesus has the power. When we remember the cross, we know that our, our, our diseases are healed. When you remember the cr cross, we know that, of course, no curses can have power over us. There's so many things that 
the cross has done in our lives. So Jesus Christ was at the point of the cross. Amen. Going through all the pain and everything that he had done. He is at the last minute, the final hour. So he said it is finished. And when he said, he said those words, previously we remember. Uh, he had the opportunity to preach the gospel. There were those that were healed. There were those that were resurrected. There were, there, there were those that were delivered. There's so many things that Christ did while he was still here. And at the cross, he said that it was finished, meaning that he was able to do what he was chosen to, to, to be able to do or accomplish by the Father we will see here. Now, that is something that is actually very, very amazing. And it is important that we remind ourselves with Christ's story, knowing that he was able to do everything here on earth, at least in the three years that he was here. He was able to accomplish the ministry work that the Lord had given him. So when you see the life of Christ and how he did his, his things, what we can actually ce celebrate and thank the Lord for is that he did everything on our behalf out of love, out of the power that was being born at the cross, knowing that a time will come in our lives when we would need so much power, when we, when we would need grace, when we will need strength, to be able to stand before our Father. So we need to thank the Lord for that. So the same way that Christ was actually on a mission and he came, he was able to come uh, through Mary by the strength of the Holy Spirit and he did everything that else that he was able to do. It is my prayer and it is your prayer too to be able to run your race in a way that you are going to be able to accomplish the things that the Lord has for you. Now, this is our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not to say that the things that he did was easy. Remember, while he was still here, he had to do to deal with so many things in the life that the Lord had given him. He had so many things to deal with. But I thank our Lord because he's the one that gives us the strength to remember that he did it the same way that he overcame is the same way that we are going to overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. He had power and authority. And defeated the world. And he defeated the flesh. And he defeated the enemy. And now he's at the cross saying that it is all done. It is finished my children. You can now take the power. Amen. You can now receive this grace that I'm releasing to you. Because I'm not only dying. But there's something actually coming out of this death. And this resurrection. And until today. We can actually thank the Lord for what he did. So. Whilst he was running his race, he did not look behind. He focused and he looked ahead and realized, I have to accomplish this mission. I have to do what the Father has sent me to do. There was a time the Lord uh, was, was there and the cup was suffering seemed to be very heavy in his spirit. But he said, not as I will, but as you, my Father, will. And he said that, let me drink of this cup in the name of Jesus Christ. What am I trying to draw to you today? I'm trying to tell you that there is a journey ahead of you. Amen. And it is a long journey. It's called the long journey of faith that has ups and downs, that has uh, bumps ahead. There is a, there's some bees, some mud, of course, ahead of there, some sun. There are times when you think that, we cannot walk. There are times when you think that you cannot get up. There are times when you ask yourself, am I really going to get to my destiny? Am I going to be able to beat these altars that are fighting against me? But the Lord Jesus said that it is finished in the name of Jesus Christ, that it is finished. I have won the battle. And because I have won, my blood is sufficient for you. The grace that I have is sufficient for you. The power that is in my word is sufficient for you. So we are actually not alone. And like I began uh, saying that you cannot walk this journey alone. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. We need strength because there are those times when you feel like you don't know whether you're going to make it, but by the power of the Lord, of course, it is possible. Christ has given us a very, very uh, a good opportunity or a great opportunity to be able to rise up, 
to be able to continue the work that is left us, to be able to do our assignment or work on our assignment while we're still here. Of course, after realizing your original purpose, after realizing who you are and where you're headed, then it becomes easy for us as fellow brethren. So if the Lord, because it's a perfect example that we can use, if the Lord was very, very well capable of uh, doing what the Lord had called him to do, I know that we are also going to be capable to overcome. And like I said, the journey of the cross is not an easy, an easy journey. There is pain, there is suffering, there's so many things that we go through along the way. But because our God is faithful and he was able to go through all of that, we must run your race in the name of Jesus Christ. Not by going through any other person's lane, but by staying on your lane, staying focused and knowing that I'm going to become the best, best doctor. That is where the Lord has put you. I'm going to become the best teacher that I can be. I'm going to be the, the, one, the best uh, teacher of the word that I can be. Wherever it is that the Lord has positioned you, there is where you're going to start running. Like I said, I cannot start running physically at, in, in athletics because that is a different discipline in the name of Jesus Christ. So it is very, very important for us as the church of Christ, as fellow brothers and sisters to know that we need to focus on our lane. We need to understand that this is where I'm headed. This is where I'm going. And by the grace of our Lord, Christ is going to help me to get to the place that I ought to get. In the name of Jesus Christ, the perfect thing that we are waiting for is the crown, the price. And I think, and, and when you watch sometimes the way people are given their crowns, of course, you feel so excited when you see your country maybe is represented, your country has done very well. You see that, how can it be on the other side? In the name of Jesus Christ. So Christ did it for us. Now, I want us to read uh, in the book of John. The major assignment, like assignment, like we said, that was uh, for Christ was to restore us back to our Father, and He actually accomplished it, and He did it very, very well. Now, the book of John, chapter fourteen, verses one to three, has something for us. John chapter fourteen, verses one to three says, "Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions." If it were not so, I would have told you, I have gone to prepare a place for you. Amen. Verses 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may also be there. So these are comforting words that we have read from the book of John, where Christ himself was actually confirming and saying, you know, take heart, have faith, Continue in your journey. But while you're on your journey, I want you to remember that there's somewhere that I'm preparing for you. So even if you're going to be here, continue with the work that I'm left for you. Make sure that you continue with what I have for you. But remember, you need to take heart. Where I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then I'm going to come back and take you so that you can be the place where I am. So when he was saying these words, he actually meant that concentrate on the gift that I've given you. Concentrate on what I've invested inside you as an honorable vessel. Concentrate on what I want you to do while you're still here. But in your mind and in your spirit and in your heart, know that where I'm going, that is where you're supposed to be. And I want to make sure that place is ready. So while you're still running your race and expecting to win the prize, when you come to where I am, you'll find that your place is already ready in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why we always don't lose heart. Because I know you've seen sometimes when people are running, that those who fall down, but they go, don't give up. They would rather uh, run limping, but make sure that they have finished their race. There are those who will opt maybe to go out and say, I cannot do this anymore. I feel like the injury that I've had, I cannot move forward. But for us believers, when you fall down, you get up, you wake up and tell the Lord, I am down. 
but I don't want to stay down. I want to make sure that I get to the promises that you've left for me in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why we remind ourselves through faith that we are running, but we are not running on our own. Because if you were to run that race on your own, in your own physical strength, of course, you'll get tired. I'm talking about the spiritual race. But in the physical race, of course, you're sweating, but you're still running. But in the spiritual race, the race that you're running right now, the, the Lord himself gives us the power, knowing that it is not an easy journey, knowing that there are hurdles that are going to be ahead of us, knowing that for you to be victorious, you have to fight the battle. And even if the battle is not yours, but there's a role you have to play and there's a role that the Lord is going to play in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why where there's victory, no, there has been a lot of toiling. There has been a lot of sweating. There has been a lot of trouble. There has been so much that is going on. But at the end of the day, what is called victory, if you look behind the curtain, something else was boiling. Something else was happening. So if somebody was to testify and stand, stand up and say that, this is where I am. I thank God for vi giving me victory. This is what I have achieved. So if somebody has achieved maybe some, uh, a gift through their learning or prize through their learning, they will always say, I have not, I've not been sleeping. I've been reading. I've been trying to understand what the teacher has been saying. But by the grace of God, the Lord has enabled me to be able to come this position, the first position in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why we say, even if you're going to run the race, run your own race. Let other people run their races. The grace is different, but the destination is only one destination. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we need to keep on reminding ourselves because I know that running is a must. It's not to say that you might not fall down. But even if you fall down, you rise up and continue with what you are supposed to do. Because we serve a faithful God. And if this was Jesus Christ and in the midst of the three years, he did everything that the Lord had for him to do. And he went back and he says that I'm going to come back for you. So it means that we stay focused. You remain focused and do what you're supposed to do. And when the time comes, of course, he's going to take us where he is in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need not uh, uh, let our eyes off the price. We always need to remind ourselves that I have to soldier on. I have to look forward. I am not looking back. The problem is most of the times, we want to listen to what other people are saying. You know, you can listen to somebody and they can discourage you. People have made so many people not to get to their destinies. So you look ahead, read the word of God, and you keep on praying and telling the Lord that I want to get to my destination. I want to run my race. I want to concentrate on what I'm supposed to do whilst I'm still here. But if we listen to other people that are going to divert us, amongst those people being the enemy amen and you listen to every other sort of thing that is going on around us it is going to be very 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 difficult for you to get to the place that the lord wants you to get but the point here is that you need to run on your race concentrate on your destiny concentrate on your purpose concentrate on what god called you to do so that at the end of the day you can say that i have done the best that i can and i know that this is where I am and I am ready for the Lord's coming or I am ready knowing that I have done everything that I could do. And that, is, and that is what Christ said at the cross that it is finished. I have fought for the church. Amen. I have ensured that the church now has the power and the authority. Amen. Through my name, Jesus. So I thank the Lord because he is a very faithful God. And he is the one that gives us the power. He is the one that sustains us and enables us to be able to get to the place that we want to get through faith. That is why we keep on reading the word of God to remind us that the journey is so long. But even if it, it is so long, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we are going to get to the place whereby the Lord wants us to get in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want us to know this uh, this morning for those who are watching 
uh, who are in the same time zone as we are. We need to concentrate on our path. Don't look at somebody else's path. Don't look at somebody else's destiny. The Lord knows how he's going to bless you. The Lord knows how he's going to fight for you. The Lord knows where you're going to be two, three years from now. But even if the Lord knows that, you have a role to play. You need to understand that even if this is the race I'm running, it is my race. It is my race. It is I the Lord wants to speak to. It is I that the Lord is going to use. I don't know what he's going to do or how he's going to do it. But if I concentrate on myself and see how I'm going to get to the place that the Lord wants me to get, of course, it's going to be very possible for me. So we need to know that our God works in different ways. He works in mighty ways. He says that, he says that his thoughts are not like our thoughts. And at the end of the day, everybody has their own blessings. Everybody has their own destinations. That is why it is not good to uh, actually compete. It's not good before the eyes of God. Concentrate on your purpose. Concentrate on your destination. Concentrate on your journey. Concentrate on what the Lord wants you to do. And of course, if Christ himself did it, we are also going to do it. And we're not doing it by our strength. We are doing it by the help of the Holy Spirit because he's the one that shows us what we are supposed to do at what time. He's the one that enables us to progress from one ladder to the other. He's the one that speaks to us and tells us this is what God wants you to do. You need to be praying more right now. You need to be reading the word right now so that as to get to your journey, this that inner person that must be speaking to you. For Christ to come in this world, uh, when we, we when we, when we uh, uh, try to go back, we need to know that it was planned in the spiritual realm. So your life also has been planned in the spirit. In the kingdom of God, it has been planned in a good way. But in the kingdom of darkness, it has been planned in a bad way because at the end of the day, the work of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy so that you do not get to the original purpose so that you don't get to fulfill what Christ had actually ordained for you to do. Because your life, of course, in the, in the, in the heavenly realms or in the kingdom of God, there are things that has, have already been written that you ought to do. But the enemy doesn't want you to get to that place. But I thank God. I really, really thank God. Because there are those who are ahead of us, our fathers of faith. There are those who are ahead of us and they want the battle apart from jesus christ they won the battle the disciples won the battle so even if we are going to be frustrated by every evil work of the enemy we know that we must fight we must fight we must fight for our country we must fight for our families we must fight for our children we must fight for our destinies whatever it is that the lord has kept for us we must fight for it in the spiritual realm and so that uh, we can get to the place that the Lord wants us to get. I want to let you know that, let you know one thing. The journey is very, very long, but concentrate on your race. Concentrate on the journey that is ahead of you. Know that it is Christ that gives us the power to be able to stand. It is him that gives us the power to be able to run that race. It is him that gives us the grace to be able to know who we are, where we are headed, and how we are going to get there. Because those are three totally very different things. So don't look at other people. Maybe there, are, there may be people ahead of you. They're doing very well. They seem like they don't have any trouble. Don't look at such people. Concentrate on where God wants you to be. Concentrate on what God is saying who you are. You might not be there, not, you might not be there right now, but... By the help of the Lord, he's going to assist you through his Holy Spirit to be able to walk on that journey. Even if the road might be very narrow, he knows how you're going to walk on that journey. And if we push with prayers, if we push with reading the word of God, if we have faith, continue serving, continue believing and knowing that there is truly a place that I'm headed. I know that in our hearts and in our spirits, 
that the Lord is going to make it very, very, very possible. So I know that by the grace of God, we are going to continue running this race. And like I said, it might not be easy, but we get our strength from the Lord. He's the one that enables us to succeed. So don't look at where you are right now. Even if you're not in the place that you want to be, know that the journey of faith is a long journey, but by the help of the Lord, because I know that we are consistently praying, we are telling the Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to sustain me. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to enable me to have enough faith to get to the place that I want to get. It is very, very possible. Don't give up on your ambition. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your destiny. Push forward and know that at the end of the day, there's going to uh, be a testimony that is going to come out of that. Because for Christ, of course, there was a big testimony. The grace was born out of the cross. And that is why we can really stand firm and say that we are not defeated. We cannot be defeated because we have the power. We are sons by the seeds of the Holy Spirit. It confirms that you are a son, that I am a son, that I am a child of God at the end of the day in the name of Jesus Christ. So concentrate on the journey that is ahead of you. Be prepared for battle in and out of season and constantly remind yourself of who you are, the kingdom that you carry and where you're headed. And when the Lord does it for you, at the end of the day, there is a price. There is victory. At the end of the day, after toiling, after uh, after crying, after going through so much pain, after going through much suffering, we have seen so many people praise the name of the Lord and say, I will not have done this without the Lord. I would not have done this if I was not that committed in seeking God. I would not have done, I, this would not be possible if I would have listened to other men and women who did not want me to get to my destiny. The main point here is that let your heart, mind, soul, and spirit concentrate and remain focused on what it is that the Lord has for you as a personal individual. It is not it over. There is so much the Lord has for us as his church. There is so much that we have to do. But at the end of the day, by the grace of the Lord, may he enable you, may he strengthen you to be able to see ahead clearly in the name of Jesus Christ, despite the hurdles, because when the hurdles, you have to jump. Amen. If the water is ahead of there, you have to swim. We are going to do whatever it takes to ensure that if we are bowing out, we are bowing out, having known that we have done our best, having knowing that, that there is no much more that we can do, having knowing that we have come out as overcomers in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that the Lord is going to bless us. So there are so many things that we are going to look at on this, uh, on the running, uh, on how we can run the race, what it is that is required of us. But I know that as you proceed, the Lord is going, going to be very, very faithful to us because we desire to know that the race is here with me. How do I get there? What am I going to do? What am I looking at? How am I going to get to my destiny? How am I going to ensure that at the end of the day, I receive this price that the Lord has kept for me? Don't lose heart. Always remember the words of Jesus Christ. And if you would read the history of Jesus Christ, it was not easy because he came to this world in the flesh. He came to this world in the flesh so that uh, he could actually show us that it was possible. I'm coming to you in the flesh, but look at the way I've lived my life. Imitate and see what I've been doing so that you can also get the courage and know that even if the enemy is saying it's impossible, that is not true. It is possible because as we are speaking right now, he has prepared a place for us in the name of Jesus Christ. So you fight the good fight of faith. Remember, the race is there. You must run your race. Don't look at other people. Concentrate on the race that is ahead of you. Know that you have a divine purpose. You have a divine calling and you must accomplish your assignment while you're still here. After doing the work, that is when we get paid. By the way, nobody gets paid before doing the work. Amen. You have to do the work. 
uh we get paid every end of the month for those who are working uh you have your employers so every end of the month especially when you're almost getting to the end of the month you always get very excited you're saying like oh my god i have two three days two or three days i'm going to get to receive my salary of course you're very excited because you know you've been working very hard of course maybe you are broke at that time but you you are still working knowing that in two or three days i'm going to receive my salary i know when your salary is in your account of course you feel so good you have to budget and know that let me do my budget because i know in two or three days time i'm going to receive my salary because i've been working very hard and this is something that i'm entitled to so if you're being if you're not being paid and you're working of course your boss is going to be in trouble so the same thing with the kingdom of god there is something that is even is more wonderful it is more glorious it is so powerful i don't even know how i can describe it what awaits is just so great let us not tire don't get tired at the last minute let the holy spirit continue to encourage you let him continue to advise you on what to do just know that you have to be focused in the name of jesus christ because we serve a mighty god we serve a glorious god and he can never leave us he can never forsake us because we have been called and not you have not only been called you have been chosen meaning if you're chosen you are a very special person amen you're not other like other people there's something that is extra in you there's something that is working in you that you cannot compare with people that are in the world so let us uh just remember these words of jesus christ that he chose us beforehand Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 according to as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world so there was a book that was actually written about you even before you knew it but even if the book was there you have to ensure what was written that you have to accomplish must be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ it doesn't matter how we are going to do it but by the power of the Lord when you succeed in all that you come out with a testimony to encourage other servants of God, to encourage other children of God that it is very, very possible in the name of Jesus Christ. So I really want to thank us for being here because our God has been very, very faithful. But we have been talking about running your race. The race is there. The race is there. Run, 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 run your race. Don't look behind because if you look behind, most likely, you want to see what is going on behind and when you look behind the person that is across you is going to run and get to the finish line you know when you're looking at some of these things that happen physically like athletics there are things or there are rules that you do there are things that you can see that they can never do because they know if i look behind chances are i'm not going to look forward i'm going to think that this person is really so close to me and when i'm looking behind i get distracted so we are not going to be distracted by anybody we are forging forward we are looking forward knowing that we are running our personal races at a personal level and when you run your race and you're faithful and you do whatever it is that it takes when you're done the victory is there and the, the victory you have to believe in your heart and your spirit i must be victorious i've been studying for four years in you're you're, you're saying um, i've been studying for four years now i'm on my final exam and you're there sitting that exam and telling God, this is a race I've been running for four years. And the time has come for you to glorify yourself. When you write in those exams and you do your best, I'm telling you there's another feeling that comes. The same way when you're in your employment, whatever it is that you do and you've been doing for the longest time, when there's victory, surely somebody feels very good. And I'm praying the name of Jesus Christ that at the end of the day, run yours, run your race. Don't look at, the, at other people. Do what God wants you to do. And you're going to receive the blessings of the Lord. But finally remember, there is that final crown. There is that final reward that you're going to receive after all has been said and done. And I pray you're going to partake of it. And I pray that I may also partake of it because it is not an easy journey. But by faith and by grace and by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the Lord that confirms that, we must be overcomers. We are not looking behind. We are forging forwards, knowing that we are running our own races at our own pace, knowing that this is my pace, but by the help of the Lord, I am going to get there. Even if 
for example a tortoise is very slow but even if it's so slow it still gets to its own destiny i know nobody will want to move in that pace but it still gets to its destiny but the thing is we have to know there is a race that is ahead of you run your race concentrate look for and know that at the end of the day there must be a reward we've read also from the book of john chapter 19 verses 30 and you say that jesus christ said that it is finished at the cross and he said that knowing very well that he had done everything knowing very well that he had actually accomplished his mission and he was ready to do the rest that has remained and he still resurrected back to life so now you have power know that the anointing of the holy spirit should be working in you and know that you are running your race contents concentrate on your future concentrate on your life concentrate on your family concentrate on your country remain focused and you're going to see what the lord is going to do for us so the remaining witnesses that we have you're going to see yes i'm on this race but how do i do it because of course there's the, the, if you read the word of god there's a way we are supposed to do it so that we make sure that we run we run our races without breaking the rules without doing any other thing that is not of god but at the end of the day getting to our destiny is something that we pray that the lord is going to help us otherwise i want to thank us so much for coming into this morning service we always get to meet on wednesdays for the word of god and just remember i don't know where you are uh because you're all at different uh levels but continue on soldier on soldier on soldier on make sure that you are a soldier just keep on running if you fall down make sure that you get up keep on running keep on running don't look behind look ahead and remember jesus himself is the best example that we can use he was here for three years he did his ministry work for three years while he was still here and i thank the lord it was very fruitful because from the 12 men that he was able to raise a whole church was born in the name of jesus christ they were just 12 men they were just 12 men of course one was judas he could not continue with the journey but out of those 12 men they transformed the whole world they transformed the church they showed us what it means to be courageous they showed us what it means to be to have faith they showed us what it means to stand up for the truth and the result that was there thereof just 12 men let me call them 11 because judas at the end of the day was out they were there they were few in number but the what they did we can remember that until today in the name of jesus christ so it doesn't matter how many people we are as long as the lord can actually pinpoint and say i know he can do it i know she can do it the few people that are there are enough to transform this country they're enough to transform your family they're enough to transform the environment that you are in in the name of jesus christ we are not going in numbers but the few people that the lord has really helped they're enough to transform this nation in the name of jesus christ so god bless you so much for coming in and know that run your race look at the way christ did what he did and some of his disciples and of course you have so many examples in the bible but today the lord wanted me to talk about jesus christ and what he did of course he did so many things but you always have only one hour to hear the word of god but the amazing thing is i want you to know you must believe that you are a winner you must believe that you are an overcome you must believe that you are aiming for the price because the price is there, is there and you must believe that yes i'm here but i must accomplish what the lord has for me so you close your ears to every other person that might not be supporting that and concentrate because you have the holy spirit telling you and showing you the way that you ought to go surely may the lord help us may the lord help you may the lord help me to run my race not to compete have unhealthy competition but to run my race and focus on my journey know what it is that i'm supposed to do and you're going to receive the blessings of the lord otherwise i've had a wonderful time with you i have had a wonderful time with the holy spirit and i thank the lord because the next two or three coming wednesdays you're going to see how do i run my race 
How do I get to my destination? What it is that the Lord has for me? How do I do it? And by through faith and by reading the word of God and through prayers, the Lord is going to help us in the name of of jesus christ so i want to thank those of us who have just come in right now and those who are going to watch later on and i thank the lord because he has been very very faithful and is helping us i have uh my brother derek from uganda thank you so much for being here thank you so much i have sister juliet i have uh the people who are online that i can see uh brother tash Gitao from nyayo I have our sister Priscilla, there is Bella Timona, and everybody else who has been watching. It has been so lovely having you here. Thank you for listening to what the Lord is saying, but run your race. And I'm praying for you that you are going to believe the victory. You're going to believe in victory because if you don't believe that you can win, you have to just to change your mindset. It doesn't matter whatever is going on, but what keeps us going is knowing that christ won so we must win in the name of jesus christ so god bless you all so much i wish you all a love a wonderful day i don't know what time it is at your place but my clock is saying like two minutes to 11 a.m in the morning and i want to thank you so much for being here you can still follow my page on uh, facebook revival sister betty and you can still go to my youtube channel save revival sister betty let us walk together let us continue doing the work of the Lord and let us proceed and progress. And until we get to the place the Lord wants us to get, may the Lord bless you, may he protect you, and may he just show you what, what you need to do to get to the place that you need to get in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, God bless you so much. You can share this live broadcast. Otherwise, I, I wish you all uh, a good day that is ahead of you. And thank you so much for being here on this live stream. I'm so blessed by the word of God. And I pray that you can go back and look into it in the name of Jesus Christ. We began with 1 Corinthians chapter 9, from verses 24 up to 27. That was actually our main script. So God bless you so much. God bless you so much. May the Lord keep you. And may you just be encouraged and know that there is a price. There is a price at the end of the day. And the eternal price is more precious. So God bless you all so much, people of God, children of God. Uh, lovely, lovely to see you this morning. Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom, shalom. By the grace of God, we are going to meet next week on Monday for prayers, 12 a.m. Uh, Kenyan time. Other times it might be uh, different, but I want to thank everybody that is watching from other countries. God bless you so much. And let us just proceed with the work of God. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you so much.